I'm Jeff Cable from GT2 Photo Club and in this video I'm going to show you the layers panel in Photoshop and a few tips to help you use it more efficiently. But first let's go to the computer. Layers are like a digital version of sheets of acetate or film that you can lay one on top of another like with an old style overhead projector. You can change the order of layers, add masks to them to protect errors from changes, you can show just one layer or any number of selected layers at any time. You can change the way layers blend together using blend modes for an effect. When you have finished your project, you can flatten or merge layers to create a final image, thus saving disk space as a multi-layer document creates a large file size. You can also save your document as a PSD and continue editing at a later date. Let's take a look at our layers panel. That's this one over here. If your layers panel isn't open, you can open the layers panel by clicking on window layers up here. As you can see, I've already got that one open. At the top of the layers panel is a menu icon that you can click on to access the layers options from the drop down menu. That's this one here. There is also a Layers Options dialog box that you can access by clicking on the word Layer at the top of your screen. Let's go back to our Layers panel and take a look at some of the features. Always at the bottom of the Layers stack is the Background Layer. That's this one here. It is always partially locked, preventing some editing tasks. The Padlock icon to the right symbolises this. A background layer can be changed into a normal layer by right clicking on its layer in the layers panel, like so, and selecting layer from background at the top of the dialog box that appears, or by my favourite method which is clicking on the padlock and dragging it into the trash can, or rubbish bin if you prefer. That's this one down here. Let's go to the history panel and bring our lock back. As you see it's reappeared because I went back a stage in the history panel. To select any layer, click on that layer in the layers panel, like so. A selected or active layer or layers will be blue in the layers panel, as this one has now become. To rename a layer, double click on the layer name in the layers panel. Make sure that you actually click on the name itself. And then you can just type the name you require in the box here. I'm going to call this one top left as it contains the information for the photo that's at the top left of my collage. To duplicate a layer, right click on the layer in the layers panel and click on duplicate layer in the pop-up dialog. and then click OK in the little box. And you'll see I now have a copy of that layer. However, I don't want a copy of that layer, so once again I'm going to click on it and drag it to the trash can. Another way to make a duplicate layer is to click on the menu icon at the top here, and then select duplicate layer. Once again, little box comes up, click OK, and you will see you now have a copy of that layer. Once again, I don't really want a copy, so I'm going to drag it down to the little trash can. That's my favorite method of deleting a layer, but you can also click on the menu icon and click delete layer there. However, I don't wish to delete this layer now. I'll just click to get rid of the dialog box. To turn the visibility of a layer on or off, click on the eye icon on the left of the layer in the layers panel. That's this one here. Notice when I click on this eye icon, the layer disappears, and when I click again, it reappears again. You can change the order of the layer stack by clicking on and dragging any layer up or down in the stack, like this.
Notice that the layer I dragged up the stack has now become higher up in the order and it is now covering up other layers. If I return it to its previous position, you will see that those layers reappear. This is a very useful feature if you're making a collage such as this. You can change the opacity of a layer by clicking on the little downward facing triangle to the right of the word opacity, that's this one here, and moving the slider that appears. Turn it this way to turn down the opacity, and go this way to turn the opacity back up again. Let's click back on here to make the slider disappear again. You can lock a layer, preventing that layer from being edited. This is useful if you are happy with the work you have done to this layer and do not want to alter it. You do this by clicking on the lock icon at the top of the layers panel. It looks like a little padlock. That's this one here. And notice that a little lock icon has appeared on the active layer, indicating that that layer is now locked. You can assign a colour to a layer to help you identify it by right clicking on the layer and clicking on the colour's name in the pop-up dialog box that appears. In this case I'm going to click on the colour red and as you can see this layer has been assigned the colour red. This helps to identify it in a multi-layer document. At the bottom of the layers panel is a row of icons that you can click on to do the following. From left to right Number one, link selected layers. That's this one here. As you can see, a little warning symbol has appeared. This is because I only have one layer selected. In order to link layers, I need two or more selected. Let's select the three here. By clicking and shift clicking. And let's control click to add one more. Now I can click this icon to link those layers together. As you can see, the little link icon has appeared to indicate that these layers are all locked together. If I click and drag on any of these layers to change the position of the layer, you'll notice that all of the layers move together. And you'll see that they've all changed position in the stack together. Let's return them to their previous position, exactly the same way and you'll see that they've returned to the previous position and all four of them are all in the same position again in the stack. Let's click and drag on the little link icon to take it to the trash can to unlink these layers. And let's also unlock this layer. And let's select this layer. The second icon at the bottom of the layers panel is this one here, the FX icon. If you click on this, you'll see it adds a layer style. You can choose any of these layer styles to add to just the selected layer. For instance, I can add an inner shadow from this dialog box. Let's make it big so that we can see it. Click OK and you'll now see that we've got an inner shadow all around the inside of this layer. The next icon along is this one which is add a layer mask. As you see I've now added a mask to my layer which is indicated by this icon here. If you add a mask to a layer you can paint on that mask to prevent certain edits being applied to that layer. The fourth icon along this one here if you click on this icon, you can create a new fill or adjustment layer. In this pop-up dialog box, you can choose what type of adjustment you'd like to make. The next icon along, this one here, if you click on this, this allows you to create a new group of layers. Layer groups are like folders that contain more than one layer. You can apply opacity settings, blend modes, and layer styles to all of the layers in the group at the same time. You can collapse a layer group to save space in your layers panel by clicking on the little triangle to the left of the group name. That's this one here. 
You can color code a layer group to make it easier to find, just as you can an individual layer by right clicking on a layer and choosing a color to assign from the pop-up menu. The next icon along, this one here, allows you to create a new layer. Just click on that and a new layer has been created. And finally, the last little icon along the bottom here, number six, is this trash can, which you've already seen. If you click and drag on a layer and drag it to the trash can, it deletes it. It will also delete any effects you've applied. If you click on the logo or icon and drag it to the trash can. Also, if you select any layer and then click on your little trash can icon, you can delete that layer by clicking yes in the little pop-up dialog box. Notice that layer was deleted. However, I'd like to get that layer back, so I'll go to the history panel here and go back a step in history to bring my layer back. If you apply a layer effect by clicking on the FX icon, that's this one here, you can transfer that effect to another layer by clicking on the FX symbol that is on the right of the layer in the layers panel and dragging it to another layer, like so. You can now see that the drop shadow that was previously on this layer is now attached to this one. I'll move the FX icon back again from this layer back to where it was before and you'll see that effect has now appeared back on the original layer. If you want to transfer the effect to a new layer but keep it on the original layer as well hold down the ALT option key as you click and drag. As you can see that effect is still on the original layer but has also been transferred to our new layer and the little FX icon here signifies that those layers have that effect applied. However, I don't want that effect on this particular layer, so once again, click on the icon, drag to the trash can, and that effect here has now disappeared. Type layers are layers that only contain type. You create one by selecting the horizontal or vertical type tools from the tools panel on the left, or by pressing the T key. You will see the T icon here, indicating that the type tool has been selected. Type your text, in this case the word layers. When you have written your text, click on the tick check mark icon at the top here. Click Ctrl and T to bring up the free transform box. Then you can adjust the size of your text or the shape of your text and also position it where you require. Again, click on the tick or check mark icon to commit the action. Notice that the new type layer appears in our layers panel over here and then it has a T icon to represent that it's actually a type layer. I don't actually want this layer anymore, so once again, I'm going to click and drag down to our trash can to delete the layer. As with regular layers, you can apply layer styles or effects, as I have done to this type layer here. Notice the little eye icon here. You can click on this to switch the effect off. And back on again. This is useful if you want to see if you like the effect before committing it to your work. Let's have a look at the fill opacity controls. At the top right of the layers panel, below the opacity controls, is a box to control the fill opacity. That's this one here. Click on the little downward facing triangle to bring up a slider. And you can turn it to the left to turn down the fill opacity and to the right to bring it back up again. Just as you can control the overall opacity of a layer, 
you can control the opacity of the pixels or shapes in your layer without affecting layer styles or the layer blend modes. Let's click on this layer here to make it the selected layer. That's this layer. Click on fill. Slide the opacity down. Notice that the opacity of the overall layer has gone down to zero, but it hasn't affected the effects I've applied, such as the drop shadow or the type. Turn the opacity back up again, and it brings the opacity back overall to our layer. As with most things in Photoshop, the best way to see how this works is to make some adjustments and see their effects. You can merge layers or flatten the image into one layer by clicking on the menu icon at the top right of the layers panel or by clicking on the word layer at the top of your screen and choosing an option, such as merge visible or flatten image. Let's go back to our menu icon. As you can see we have the same options. When you merge layers together you can use blend modes to control how they blend together or create an effect. You can access these by clicking on the box that says normal, the default, and choosing your blend mode. Let's select this layer here and choose a blend mode. And you'll see that's changed the way that's blended to give an effect. Let's try another one. And let's return to normal blend mode. Choose the top one, that's the default. Once again, clicking on and experimenting is the best way to see how this works. Now I'm happy with my image, I'll select all the layers and then flatten the image this will turn the image into a one layer image which will save us a lot of space on our disk however if you save your document containing all the layers as a PSD you can return to that document at a later date as many times as you like and continue to edit the layers this is a major plus as it means your edits are non-destructive. Let's go back a place in our history panel before I flattened the image. I can now save the image as a PSD PSD here click in this box OK and I can return to that image and edit it at any time and I've got all my layers in place. That concludes our look at the layers panel. As you can see there's lots of options and adjustments you can make in this panel. It's one of the most useful features of Photoshop. Hope you found that tutorial useful. Please go to our website gc2photoclub.com for more videos and information. I'm Jeff Cable from GC2 Photo Club. Hope to see you again soon.